Welcome to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at biotech. Okay. Specifically, the quest for effective cancer treatments. Sounds good. And we've got some fascinating insights to uncover from articles on biotech investment trends, oh, yeah. as well as a deep dive into a company called CELSCI Corporation. Right. We're developing a potentially revolutionary cancer treatment called Multikine. Interesting. So you ready to explore this with me? Yeah, let's dive in. It's a really fascinating area, yeah. particularly right now with the biotech sector facing some serious challenges. Yeah, it, the articles paint a pretty bleak picture. Yeah. One even goes as far as to call the current investment climate horrible. So why is that? Well, uh, a lot of it stems from the Biden administration's changes to the FDA's accelerated approval process. Okay. Back in December 2022, yeah. you see under the previous administration, right. companies could get faster approval based on early data, Not giving them a chance to generate revenue and fund more research while providing patients quicker access to potentially life-saving treatments. Right. But now the shift requires companies to now complete confirmatory trials before getting that accelerated approval. So it's added a layer of complexity, Maybe. time, and cost for companies making investors hesitant. Exactly. And we're seeing the impact. Yeah. Even companies that have achieved drug approvals. Mm -hmm. like Immunity Bio and Iovance have experienced significant stock price drops. It's interesting, though. Yeah. One article suggests this downturn might actually be a prime buying opportunity. Oh. What are your thoughts on that? It's a contrarian perspective, but a valid one. Okay. The argument is that the current stock prices already reflect all the negative news. Okay. So even a slight improvement in the sector could lead to substantial gains for those who invested during this dip. Hmm. We're even seeing some funds shifting from tech to biotech. Wow. Perhaps signaling a belief that biotech's about to take off. That's a compelling thought. Yeah. Especially with all the talk about whether tech has peaked. Yeah. So this challenging landscape is where CEO SCI is trying to make their mark, right? Right. They're developing multi-kind for head and neck cancer. Yeah. What's their approach? What's fascinating about CLSCI and Multikine is their focus on using the body's own immune system to fight cancer. Okay. And they're doing it in a way that's quite different from many other cancer treatments. Okay. I'm intrigued. How does it work? Multikine is an immunotherapy. Hmm. which means it works by boosting the immune system to recognize and destroy cancer cells. Okay. But the key difference lies in when it's given. Good. Instead of administering it after standard cancer treatments like surgery, right. radiation or chemotherapy, CELIS SEI's approach, is to strengthen the immune system before those treatments. So they're essentially giving the immune system a boost before it's potentially weakened by other treatments. Precisely. Okay. The idea is to bolster the body's natural defenses when they're at their strongest, allowing it to fight off cancer cells more effectively <laughs> and potentially even prevent recurrence. That's a pretty radical departure from the typical approach. Yeah. What led them to this strategy? It stems from the understanding that the immune system plays a vital role in fighting cancer. Okay. CLSCI believes that empowering the immune system early on before it's compromised mm gives the body the best chance of battling the disease. Right. It's a preventative approach, yeah. almost like giving the immune system a head start. That makes sense. Oh. So how does this contrast with other cancer treatments on the market? Many current immunotherapies, like Keytruda, for example, right. work by targeting specific proteins on cancer cells. Okay. But these treatments often only benefit a subset of patients mm -hmm. who express those specific proteins. Okay. Multikind, however, appears to work for a broader range of patients, regardless of their protein expression levels. So potentially a much wider application. Exactly. And to evaluate this approach, CLSEI conducted a massive phase three trial. Okay. The final stage of clinical testing before a drug can be submitted for approval. And we're talking the largest ever conducted for head and neck cancer, right? Yes. With nearly a thousand participants. You, It's a testament to their commitment to rigorous research yeah and the results were quite remarkable tell me more what did they find the trial demonstrated a statistically significant improvement in five-year overall survival right for patients who received multi-kind before surgery and radiation mm. compared to those who received standard treatment alone meaning the results weren't just due to chance right the p-value okay a measure of statistical significance mm -hmm. was well below the threshold typically used to determine if the findings are reliable so what were the actual survival rates? Uh, what kind of improvement are we talking about? Patients receiving Multikine achieved a five-year overall survival rate of 62.7%. Okay. 
compared to 48.6% in the control group. That's a 14.1% improvement. A pretty substantial difference, wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, pretty big difference. A 14% increase in survival is significant. Yeah, and the study also showed that the risk of death was 32% lower for those who received multikine. Okay, that's impressive, but I'm guessing there's more to the story, right? There is one interesting wrinkle. Yeah. They found that adding chemotherapy seemed to negate the positive effects of multikine. That's unexpected. What could be the reason for that? It's a question researchers are still trying to unpack. Mm. It's possible that chemotherapy, which can suppress the immune system, right. counteracted the boost multikine was providing. Okay. It's a reminder of the intricate dance between different therapies and how they can interact in complex ways. So potentially a case of one treatment undermining the other. Yeah. There is some interesting questions about how multikine would be integrated into existing treatment protocols. Absolutely, and that's something CLSCI will likely need to address as they move forward. Okay, so we've got this potentially game-changing treatment, but it also raises some new questions. Right. Where does CELSCI go from here? Yeah. What are the next steps for multikine? With this compelling data in hand, yeah. CELSCI is preparing to submit their application to the FDA for multi-kinds approval. So they're hoping to bring this treatment to market. Yeah. What are their chances of success and what are the potential implications if they do get approval? That's where things get really interesting, and we'll delve into that in the next part of our deep dive. So if Multikine gets the green light from the FDA, um, it could have a ripple effect yeah. throughout the entire field of immunotherapy. Okay. Imagine this becoming the new standard of care for head and neck cancer. Mm. Uh, it could pave the way for similar preventative approaches in treating other types of cancer. Yeah, it's an exciting prospect. Right. What if we could boost the immune system before treating lung cancer, breast cancer, or even those more aggressive cancers like pancreatic cancer. Exactly. We could be looking at a complete shift in how we approach cancer treatment. Wow. Moving from reactive to proactive, mm -hmm. empowering the body to fight cancer from the get-go. It aligns perfectly with CLSCI's philosophy of use your immune system to fight disease. They're not just developing a drug. Yeah. They're pioneering a whole new way of thinking about how we treat cancer. And their vision extends beyond cancer. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're also researching treatments for autoimmune diseases and infectious diseases. Right, they have that LAPS technology. Yeah. But I have to admit, I'm a bit fuzzy on what that is. LAPS stands for Ligand Epitope Antigen Presentation System. Okay. Essentially, it allows them to create very targeted therapies mm -hmm. that can either stimulate or suppress specific immune responses. Okay. Depending on what's needed for the particular disease they're targeting. So for something like rheumatoid arthritis, where the immune system is overactive, they could use Lalo PS to suppress the immune response that's attacking the joints. Precisely. And for infectious diseases, mm -hmm. they could use it to ramp up the immune system's ability to fight off the invading pathogens. It's remarkable how one company can be working on solutions across such a broad spectrum of diseases. Yeah. All by tapping into a deeper understanding of the immune system. It speaks volumes about the versatility of immunotherapy. Yeah. And highlights the potential for CLSAI to become a major player in various fields of medicine. They're betting big on the immune system as the ultimate weapon against disease. Yeah. But what about the people behind CLSAI? Yeah. The driving force behind this innovation? They seem to have a very dedicated and passionate team driven by a genuine belief in the power of their approach. Okay. There's a quote from their CEO, Geert Kirsten, that really captures their mission. Mm -hmm. He said, and I quote, CLSEI has a dedicated and passionate team that believes boosting a patient's immune system while it is still intact should provide the greatest possible impact on survival when it comes to cancer immunotherapy. You can really sense the conviction behind those words, the belief that they can make a real difference in people's lives. And it sounds like they've assembled a very capable team Absolutely. They have core expertise in drug discovery, research development, and even manufacturing. Wow. It seems they've built a vertically integrated operation. Okay. Which is not that common in the biotech world. So they have control over the whole process. Initial research to bringing a product to market. Yes, that gives them a significant strategic advantage. Okay. Especially for a smaller company and could really streamline their path to launching Multikine if it gets approved. 
We've talked a lot about the science and the potential of multi-kind. Right. But I'd love to shift gears and talk about the human side of things. Okay. What does all this mean for the people who are actually facing a head and neck cancer diagnosis? That's the heart of the matter, isn't it? Yeah. Currently, the standard of care for head and neck cancer often involves surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Yeah. All of which can be incredibly grueling and take a huge toll on a person's quality of life. Absolutely. Those treatments can have some pretty debilitating side effects. Exactly. Things like difficulty speaking and swallowing disfigurement, chronic pain. Yeah. Even after going through all that, there's always the fear that the cancer might come back. So the possibility of a treatment like multi-kind, right. one that could potentially improve survival rates and minimize side effects, would be a game changer for these patients. Absolutely. It's not just about extending life. Mm -hmm. It's about improving the quality of that life, allowing patients to go through treatment without those debilitating side effects. It would be a huge step forward in terms of patient care and well-being. And let's not forget the potential impact on the healthcare system as a whole. Yeah. If multi-kind can reduce the need for more costly and time-consuming treatments, right. we could see significant cost savings and a freeing up of resources yeah. that could be directed towards other areas of healthcare. Mm -hmm. The ripple effect could extend far beyond the field of oncology. It's a powerful reminder that breakthroughs in healthcare don't just impact patients. Right. They have the potential to change society as a whole. Yeah. But let's be realistic, even with all this potential, yeah. what are some of the challenges CELSCI might face in bringing this treatment to market? Well, the most immediate hurdle is, of course, getting FDA approval. Right. As we discussed earlier, the regulatory landscape is becoming increasingly complex, mm -hmm. especially with the recent changes to the accelerated approval process. They're going to have to make a very strong case to the FDA, yeah. demonstrating that Multikine is safe, effective, and truly offers something better than existing treatments. Right. And the fact that chemotherapy seemed to negate Multikine's benefits yeah. is something they'll need to address. Mm. Further research will be needed to understand that interaction and determine if there are ways to work around it. And if it does get approved, really? will they be able to actually produce enough of the drug to meet demand? That's a good question. Scaling up manufacturing can be a major challenge for biotech companies. It can. Especially when dealing with complex biological therapies like Multikine. You bring up a critical point. They'll need to ensure they have the capacity and infrastructure to produce a high quality drug on a large scale. Right. And then there's the question of cost. Yeah. Immunotherapies are notoriously expensive. Mm -hmm. How do they make this treatment accessible to everyone who needs it? It's a complex equation they need to balance recouping their research and development costs yeah. with the very real need to make this potentially life-saving treatment affordable. It's a tightrope walk, but hopefully one they can navigate successfully. Yeah. Because if they can overcome these challenges and bring multi-kind to market, mm -hmm. it could truly revolutionize how we treat head and neck cancer and potentially many other types of cancer as well. It's a story worth following closely. The stakes are high. They are. But so is the potential for positive change. It really speaks to human ingenuity. Yeah. And the relentless pursuit of better treatments driven by a desire to alleviate suffering and improve lives. Mm. Now, before we move on to the final part of our deep dive, I want to pause for a moment and let everything we've discussed sink in. Yeah. We've covered a lot of ground, the challenges facing the biotech industry, the intricacies of immunotherapy, the potential impact of Multikine, and the human side of the story. Absolutely. I'd love to hear your thoughts, dear listener. What stands out to you? What intrigues you? What concerns you? Yeah. What questions are bubbling up in your mind as we continue to explore this topic together? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, this isn't just about CELSCI or multi-kind. Right. It's about the future of healthcare and the power of innovation to change lives. Yeah. Take a moment to reflect on everything we've discussed so far. Okay. And we'll pick up the conversation in the final part of our deep dive. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Yeah. We've been exploring the world of biotech, specifically CEL, SCI, and their potentially revolutionary cancer treatment multi-kind. I don't know about you, but I'm even more curious after considering the potential impact this could have. Oh yeah, me too. On the lives of so many people. It's a story that really captures the imagination, doesn't it? 
Yeah. The idea of harnessing the body's own defenses yeah. to fight cancer in such a proactive way. Absolutely. And the scale of that phase three trial, yeah. enrolling nearly a thousand patients really struck me. Oh yeah, for sure. It makes you realize the resources and dedication required to bring a new treatment to market. It's a huge undertaking, no doubt. Yeah. And it raises an important question about funding. Right. Especially given the challenging investment climate we discussed earlier. Right. That horrible landscape for biotech investments. Yeah, exactly. So how does a company like CLSCI, mm -hmm. with such ambitious goals, right. manage to secure the necessary funding to conduct research on this scale? Well, one way is through dilution, which we touched on briefly before. Yeah, yeah. It essentially involves issuing more shares to raise capital. So it's a balancing act. Yeah. Trying to attract investors while also being mindful of the impact on existing shareholders. Exactly. And it's something CLSEI will have to navigate carefully as they move forward. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're aiming to become this multi-billion dollar company, some predict. Another thing that keeps coming back to me is this idea of administering multi-kind before traditional cancer treatments. Yeah. It seems so counterintuitive to everything we've come to expect in cancer care. It's definitely a paradigm shift. Yeah. We're so accustomed to thinking of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy right. as the primary weapons against cancer. Mm -hmm. But CLSCI is challenging that assumption. Right. Suggesting that empowering the immune system early on could be even more effective. It's like laying the groundwork for the body to fight back, mm -hmm. giving it the tools it needs to mount a stronger defense. Precisely. And it aligns with the growing body of evidence that highlights the crucial role oh, yeah. the immune system plays in combating cancer. I'm also curious about the long-term implications of multi-kind success. Okay. If it becomes the standard of care for head and neck cancer, could this approach be applied to other types of cancer as well? It's a question that has researchers and investors incredibly excited. Yeah. If multi-kind proves effective in a broader population, mm -hmm. it could open up entirely new avenues for cancer immunotherapy. Imagine a future where boosting the immune system right. becomes the first line of defense against cancer. Yeah. Potentially reducing or even eliminating the need for more aggressive treatments. It's a vision that holds immense promise both for improving patient outcomes mm -hmm. and potentially transforming the entire landscape of cancer care. But as we've discussed, there are still hurdles to overcome. The FDA approval process is just the first step. Absolutely. There are questions about manufacturing, distribution, and affordability that will need to be addressed. Right. Science is a process, mm -hmm. and progress is rarely linear. So what are the key takeaways from our deep dive into biotech, CEO, SEI, and multi-kind? I think the biggest takeaway is that even in a challenging industry like biotech, yeah. there are companies like CEO, SEI who are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. They're not just developing a drug, they're pioneering a new way of thinking about cancer treatment, hmm. a way that focuses on empowering the body's own defenses to fight disease. We've seen that Multikind, their lead product, has shown remarkable results in clinical trials, offering hope for a more effective and less debilitating approach to treating head and neck cancer. And potentially this approach could have much broader applications, mm. extending to other types of cancer and even other diseases. Well, we've also acknowledged the complexities and uncertainties that lie ahead. Yeah, for sure. The road to bringing a new treatment to market is long and arduous. It is. There will be challenges, setbacks, and tough questions to answer along the way. Of course. But amidst all that, yeah. there's a real sense of hope and excitement surrounding Multikind. Absolutely. It represents a bold new approach to cancer treatment one that embraces the power of the immune system. Right. And offers a glimpse into a future where battling cancer might be less about fighting and more about empowering the body to heal itself. For sure. This has been a truly fascinating deep dive. You have. And I hope you, dear listener, have found it as thought-provoking as we have. Me too. The story of CEL, SCI, and Multikind is still unfolding. Yeah. And it's a story worth following closely. Absolutely. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity, the relentless pursuit of scientific advancement, mm -hmm. and the unwavering belief that we can find better ways to treat and ultimately conquer disease. It's really inspiring. So stay curious, keep exploring, and remember, the future of healthcare is being shaped yeah. by the bold ideas and the groundbreaking research happening right now. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo.